Hello everybody! Today I'm going to be showing you how to turn this plastic mason jar into a DIY mushroom fairy house. Uh, what we'll be using is this mason jar. Um, I have a dollar store football that I've cut in half and that will be going on the top of it. Uh, we'll be using some uh, Mod Podge to secure this. Uh, most importantly, we'll be using some air dry clay. And oh look, it even has a little mushroom house on it. Um, with this air dry clay, we're going to be using a couple of bamboo skewers. Um, this is called a paddle skewer. It's got a couple of different cool edges and a point on it. Um, this is just a regular bamboo skewer. It's got a nice rounded edge. And this is a popsicle stick that you can use. Um, all of these will be helpful in shaping the clay. Then we'll be able to paint it. Um, and I have a couple of paint brushes here. I have this foam brush. Uh, and then I also have some aluminum foil which we're going to use to secure the uh, shape of the top of the mushroom um, to the cap. So yeah. So when you are working with air dry clay, it's very important to only take out what you are using at that one time. So I'm gonna show you how to um, unpackage and keep the rest of this clay fresh. Okay, so this is the block um, of the clay, and this is the old wrapper. I'm gonna save um, this wrapper um, in just a second. I'm only gonna use, I think, probably, probably, uh, maybe a, yeah, a quarter of it. Probably use a quarter of it. And I'm just gonna mark it and delicately push my little tool down uh, this type of clay is very moldable, it's very soft, and it's very pliable. You grab this clay, and then what you do is you take some plastic wrap. This is air drying clay, so the longer that it stays in the air, the harder that it will become. So if you want to use this clay in the future, you have to keep it in an airtight location um, so that it will stay fresh. So I'm just going to take this clay again and I'm going to wrap this very tightly. I'm going to make sure to press down on the sides and really wrap it up just like this and then in addition to wrapping it in this, I'm going to put it in my original casing because it's easiest. And I am going to fold it over. Just like this. And then I'm going to stick it in a plastic bag that I will vacuum seal. Um, you can do that in two ways. You can either press down on the plastic bag um, very solidly, um, or you can use um, a like a small weight to help you press it in. Okay, and it is now vacuum sealed. And this will last um, up to about a month, I would say, um, or a little longer. Um, I would suggest just getting it out and, you know, making whatever you'd like to make with it and not leaving it for a long period of time. So, now that we have our clay, we can go ahead and start molding it. 
And what you want to do is you want to just like slowly get it used to the um, the ambient temperature. You want to knead it a little bit, open it up, and just sort of press it flat. Now the first thing I want to do is, well, we're going to glue the ball to the cap, but I want to um, make sure to wrap this part in a thin layer of this clay. So I'm just going to take my little skewer here and maybe take this much at a time. And I'm just going to start slowly wrapping it around. Now we want to make sure that as we're doing this, I'm going to press lightly and push, but we want to make sure that this seal isn't disturbed so that our cap can close. Make sure to press here and there. You can, um, you can either completely encase it or in my case, I'm just going to pull off the excess here and use it as um, just like an intermediary. And see, I can just press it together, not a problem. You don't have to glue this clay or uh, adhere it in any way to this plastic. It's pretty good just as it is. This is where you can use some of your cool tools. You can use your skewers to make cute little lines just like this all the way around your mushroom to give it some texture. You can use your uh, tongue depressor or your popsicle stick to make indentations like this. Because this clay is so moldable, you really can do whatever you want and say you don't like it, you can just push it back into place. So I'm just gonna take some time here and I'm going to just mold this bottom part how I would like to see it. So, now that we've got our mushroom base a little bit, I'm going to firstly glue this onto our cap. Now it looks like 
a weird little hat, but this is a really important step to make sure that your uh, cap is shaped properly. Okay, so once that's there, you're going to want to press it into your uh, the actual cap here. We want this to be as close to the cap as possible. Um, if you would like to glue it in place, um, that's totally good. In fact, I recommend it so that it stays where you want it to be. So this is a good sort of seal. It doesn't come up above the cap and it's still well under the actual edge of this football. I'm just gonna glue that little part in place here. Alrighty, so we have this. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure to super press our clay. Pull it up and then we're just gonna drape it over the top. Okay, and then we're just gonna slowly work it around the outside of this football. We're gonna make sure that it sticks Okay, so I've finished working with it. Um, I just sort of worked the clay until it uh, looked like the shape that I have. You can see there's some cracks here. That's no problem at all. Um, you can see some of the tin foil and there's some uh, wrinkling and that's totally okay. Um, I want this to be a little bit of an organic feature and so I know that things in nature aren't perfect. Um, but we're also going to be painting it and uh, putting some sealer on it, so don't you worry. I used the bamboo skewer to make these mushroom-like gills, and I did a little bit more shaping on the base of this. I actually removed the uh, door and I removed this little uh, window and then I made another little window. Um, so yeah, after you just take some time and you work the clay, you should feel it sort of hardening and it won't really uh, form any longer. And that's about the time you should stop working with the clay. You can add water to it, but it really doesn't make the clay too pliable. Um, and as you can see, the clay here is still very sort of squishy. So make sure that you leave this out to dry for at least 24 hours. Um, and then uh, we'll be back to cover it with Mod Podge to seal all the clay. And then um, I'll give you a tutorial on how to paint. And in the meantime, this is what it looks like all together. This cute little mushroom house. There we go. So I'll be back in one day. Alrighty. So my uh, clay has fully hardened. It's been about um, a couple of days. Um, it took a little bit more than one day for this to dry. Um, you can tell that it's fully dry because you can tap on it and it makes a very uh, dull sound. Um, it also does not squish when you push upon it. 
Um, it's very rigid, it's very hard. So um, that's what you're looking for. If your clay is still malleable to the touch or you can squish it a little bit, um, it is definitely not ready to be painted. Leave it out um, in open air for about another day or so, I would say. So I'm going to be showing you three different techniques um, to paint uh, something like this. And um, if you want to sand any of these ridges or lines or imperfections down, now would be the time. Um, you could also um, make more indentations and deformities um, by using a, a hard stick or um, some balled up aluminum. Um, and uh, this will just make the details come out a little bit more. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start painting mine. I like all these details. I think they're going to show up nicely. Um, so yeah. What I have here is just a glass full of water um, and a paper towel. And then this piece of white paper is actually called palette paper. It's shiny because it's waxed on one side and you can use it um, as a sort of palette, um, which means you can um, pour paint directly on it and mix colors, etc. It's really useful um, in a pinch because it's very low profile. Um, I'm going to be using this flat brush to uh, try to paint as much area as possible. And I'm just using a brown here. <clears throat> okay, so the first technique I'm going to show you is called stippling. And stippling is when you take a brush like this um, and use the tips of the bristles and press in um, to your object um, with a lot of little tiny motions. Um, and instead of using this brush, and you can choose to use this brush if you want, I'm going to be using this um, sponge so that I can try and blend a little bit more of the colors. Um, but the principle is the same. You take the top of the brush and you just want to stipple like this. On the house portion of the mushroom, I'm going to be stippling some green around the edges to imitate moss or growth of it, some kind, um, grass, ivy, whatever. And, um, yeah. And similarly, on the cap, I'm actually going to be stippling a lot of yellow along the rim. Um, I want to add some spots here and there. Um, oh no, I missed a spot. Um, I want to add some spots and some different shapes and textures. So um, I'm going to first make sure that the rim is nice and stippled yellow. Okay, so now that I've got the base of my model stippled, you might be asking yourself, well, why did I paint all of that brown if I was just gonna cover it in a layer of yellow anyways? And that is because of a second technique I'm gonna teach you called washing. What we wanna do, and I'll demonstrate with this one first, is we want to fill all of these cracks and crevices with color um, without 
really coloring the top part of those crevices. And washing is a technique where you thin out a paint to do that. And it will wash over the top of your object. It will stick and fill in all the crevices and then it will wipe off the top. Now, most washes that you can get will come in a mixture of paint and acrylic and an acrylic medium, which is a type of medium that keeps its gel-like consistency, um, but allows you to thin down paint. However, in a pinch, and how I'll teach you to make a very temporary one-time use wash, is just to thin down your paint with a bunch of water, um, and then you're going to apply it, and then you're going to dab it off with a towel. So the way that we do that is we take an extra cup, you can use a smaller one if you like, and I'm going to take that same brown that I used, um, but I do recommend like a black if you have it, um, but I think the same brown that I used will give a nice, um, it'll tie in all the colors. And you just put a dollop in there, um, and then I'm going to fill it about about here with water. You don't want a one-to-one -one ratio, you want like a one-to-three ratio. You basically want pigmented water. Okay, this looks really gross right now, but that's okay. And you're just gonna make it, make sure that it's really mixed up. I recommend using a paintbrush to really mix it up in here. Um, if you use like a spray bottle, you can easily shake it to make sure it's mixed, but um, just in case. I'm just gonna go in here and really mix it up. You can add colors to this based on how you want your wash to look. If you want it um, more pigmented, you can add more paint. If you want it in a different color, if you want your shade to, you know, uh, imply something about the environment, maybe you make it green and so the little cracks and crevices are growing, you know, moss or something like that. So basically we have this very thin paint here. Um, it's very bubbly because of the water, um, but it's very thin. It doesn't really stick to the paintbrush and it really dabs on in a watery feel. So when we use this paintbrush, and I recommend a bristled brush, um, you just grab some of this and you lightly paint it on. See how beautifully that just brings out all of your crevices? Now it's going to drip down the bottom like this. You can see it's already dripping down the bottom. So in order to avoid that, you grab a paper towel and you let it drip and then you just catch all the drips. And you're going to do that for a couple of coats. Professionally made washes that use acrylic medium will not have as much dripping and will not need extra coats of this. However, this is not a professionally made uh, acrylic medium and um, it will be a little watery in its consistency and it will need to be dabbed um, just to keep it clean. And I'm going to do that around the whole of this and also on the entirety of the cap. So now that I finished my washing, um, I added a bit more brown paint um, in paint form to the top. Um, and now you can see this really beautiful gradient effect. Um, and it's going to get even more um, highlighted um, after we do the third technique that I'll be teaching you, which is called dry brushing. Um, basically what dry brushing is, is taking a pigment of paint and uh, only a little bit on your brush and then brushing just the tips of uh, these sort of crevices to bring out the highlights on them and I'll show you how to do that. Um, I will show you on this piece um, and uh, since the 
uh, stalk of the mushroom I think right now is a little too brown. I want to make it a little lighter. Um, I'm just going to use just some white paint. Um, and if it's a, a little um, too white for you, sometimes you can add like a little bit of yellow. Um, but basically, you get paint on your paintbrush. And then this is going to sound silly, but you're going to try and get most of it off. And then instead of brushing the bristles of your brush parallel to the lines, you want to brush them perpendicular like that. You see how beautiful that, that is? You're getting all this nice, lovely color which in this case is white because I want the stalk of the mushroom to be a lighter color. But then you can see all of those uh, ridges um, or crevices still have that dark wash in them. So I'm just gonna do that all around. Make sure to get All right, so now that you see that, compare this side to this side. Look how much more dimension and interesting features and color there are when you dry brush. And then also, the stippling that I did with the green blends in so nicely with the window. So I'm gonna continue to do that all around this, and then I'm gonna do that all along the cap. Um, I am going to switch up my dry brushing colors on the cap, and I'm gonna dry brush the edges of the cap with this yellow um, to bring out those yellow highlights that I really wanted. Okay, so now that we've got our mushroom, um, I have my little yellow capped brown mushroom. Um, now's the time where I'm just gonna paint in some details. I'm gonna paint in some vines all around the top, um, maybe on the base itself, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and painted a bunch of vines, and I'm on my last one, so I wanted to show you sort of what I was doing. So I'm just taking this round brush here, uh, there we go, this round brush here, and I'm finding the um, end of the line that I made, and I'm making 
some leaves just by pressing the brush into the top here and I'm just pressing it to just show where the leaves are. Um, the paintbrush makes a little leaf pattern when you press it into um, whatever you're painting so you can really just relax and just paint how you want your piece to look. There's no really set direction. I was just sort of painting the best way that I thought it looked. And as you sort of paint and decorate your little mushroom house here, just remember that all you need to do is be creative. You don't need to have a specific plan in mind or any kind of uh, outline. You can just be creative and press your brush in to make some leaves. And I'm gonna go in with a lighter color here just to outline some of the vines and make them more visible. But the best and most wonderful thing about painting is that you really can just do whatever you want. Um, and you can make it as, as complex and intricate as you like. You can make it as simple and, and clean as you like. You can do whatever you'd like. And I think that's really nice. Uh, some of these leaves are still wet here. You can see some of the shine. So I'm actually gonna go back to the base of the mushroom first. where everything is all dry. And I'm just going to use this lighter color to come in here and just carefully line these vines. Just so you get a sense of where the vines are. There we go, look how nice that looks. You can do this in different colors. You can add flowers to these vines. You can add a touch of brown. You can make different leaves. Whatever is the most beautiful to you. Okay, so take a look at that. Here's my little mushroom house. Now the last thing, if you did want to do anything to it, would be to decorate with any um, special items. So if you had some moss, or if you had, you know, uh, some, you know, fake flowers. Um, I have one of these wooden, uh, wood slices that could look good um, but yeah so this is the finished product um, I'll take a couple of pictures to add to the end of this and I hope that you enjoy making your own little mushroom house and I look forward to seeing all of the creations you make thanks for watching